Why did the Roman Colosseum decline? During the Roman era, society glorified violence from top to bottom. Not only did emperors and nobles enjoy watching gladiator fights, but common people were also deeply interested in the bloody spectacle. In the year 72 AD, the Roman Emperor Vespasian conquered the Islamic holy city of Jerusalem. Pleased with himself, he decided to build a huge amphitheater to celebrate his victory. He sold all the slaves captured in the war to the Roman nobility, earning a huge income. Then he spent a fortune hiring the best designers and engineers in the country to build the arena, with two requirements, fast and good. The builders did not disappoint. They quickly filled in the artificial lake that originally belonged to the tyrant Nero's luxurious golden palace and erected a magnificent four-story structure. This was the Roman Colosseum, the largest circular arena in Rome at the time. Inside the arena, most of the time was spent on battles between gladiators or fights between wild beasts and slaves. If two gladiators fought to a decision, the loser had to plead for mercy from the audience. If the spectators waved their handkerchiefs, he could be spared, but if they pointed their thumbs down, he was doomed to die. This cruel competition was welcomed by everyone except the gladiators. People were fascinated by the sweat under the sun shining like diamonds and cheered for the blood sprayed in the air like fountains. They followed the excitement but forgot how painful it was for the gladiators in the arena. Only a young monk named Telemachus was shocked and determined to stop the violence in the arena. Telemachus was not a Roman but lived in a small city in Turkey. One day, while he was praying, he suddenly heard a voice from heaven saying, Go to Rome and stop all of this. He was shocked and felt that God had given him an important mission. So he immediately packed his bags and came to Rome. On the day Telemachus entered Rome, a new batch of gladiators arrived at the Roman Colosseum, and the audience's interest surged. Almost everyone went to watch the gladiators fight, resulting in an empty city and a bustling arena. Telemachus was swept along by the crowd and unwittingly found himself inside the Roman Colosseum. At first, he didn't know why people were so excited, but when he saw two armored men in the center of the square wielding swords at each other, he was extremely surprised. Because the new gladiator was too powerful, the old gladiator exhausted all his strength and fell to the ground, unable to get up. At this point, the referee asked the audience to decide the fate of the loser. The audience mercilessly pointed their thumbs down, demanding the victor to kill the other. No! Telemachus exclaimed, rushing down from the stands to stop the slaughter. At this moment, a new round of competition was about to begin, and two new gladiators slowly entered the arena, each brandishing a sword to signal to the audience. But the young monk rushed into the square and shouted loudly to the audience, in the name of Christ, stop the killing. He shouted three times, leaving the audience stunned. The Roman emperor was furious and ordered the gladiators to immediately kill this audacious man. So the gladiators wielded their long swords and struck Telemachus down in a pool of blood. The audience suddenly fell silent because this time, it wasn't a slave who died, but a commoner. They suddenly felt a sense of pain and began to question the cruelty of the competition. One audience member quietly left his seat, and then more and more spectators left in disappointment. The day's competition ended halfway through, which had never happened before. Three days later, the Roman Emperor issued a decree announcing the cessation of the cruel gladiator games. The decline of the Roman Colosseum was not due to war or earthquakes, but because of the sacrifice of a Christian, truly a miracle, 